Every time that I spend a dollar in my Amazon business, I really gotta start putting money in here for illustrations. I practically guarantee that I'm gonna make 50 cents in profit. And in today's video, I'm gonna go over the rules that I use when buying inventory at retail stores that are like, sometimes clearance stores like Dirt Cheap, which I just realized is an actual store here in North Georgia to resell on Amazon FBA. But I'm a little tired because we drove like seven or eight hours today on a six hour drive because of traffic going through Atlanta. Because we're headed to Chattanooga, Tennessee for a little bit, but these daily uploads can't stop. What we're looking at here is my inventory lab profit and loss. This is from the month of July, but we can see the cost of goods sold all the way over here is $2,266.33. But the net profit on all of that is $1,352. So just about half, actually a little bit more than that number. And just to show you that I'm not trying to cherry pick an example of a good month. These are my numbers from the past five months and they showed the cost of goods sold, profit and return on investment, all of which are above 50% ROI. Some of them being even closer to 60%. And you make your profit when you're buying the item because if you do bad research, make a bad purchase or don't have good rules, you might not be making enough money for yourself. Currently, I do only retail arbitrage, which is the reason that my return on investment is so high in those numbers. If you get into online arbitrage or wholesaling, that actual return on investment will be closer to probably 30 to 45 maybe 50 percent if you're lucky because even as we'll see as i go over what my rules are what my return on investment actually was is lower than what i plan for it to be and that's the reason that retail arbitrage can be so good because since we're going into all of these stores ourselves there are less people who can compete for the same goods because it's a little bit more of a time cost than online arbitrage and there's more legitimate scarcity because people can order just to their house from anywhere they don't have to actually be at the store that you're at and so when i'm walking into a walmart what exactly am i looking for in terms of sales rate Thank categories and return on investment and when you're looking at an item and I'll give you an example in a second the two main things that you're looking at are the sales rank and the return on investment with sales rank the lower the better because an item that has a sales rank of one is the thing that is selling the most in that category and so the rank reflects how often someone is buying that item how often it sells and it's based on each specific category you can see this directly on Amazon's website and I'll show you how to do that but you can also use various software that are specific for sourcing for Amazon like Scoutify 2 and Scout IQ that I have here and I do have a video coming out on that later this week subscribe if you're interested in that. If you've been watching some of my recent sourcing vlogs or a video that I did specifically about this scanner right here, you'll know that I have this new one that clips to the back of my phone and I used to have one that was a lot more popular by EO. You do have this link in the description if you need a scanner, but let's take a look at what the sales rank of this is on Amazon because it is a relatively new item. And this is the new scanner that comes up that clips onto the back of your phone. We scroll down on the listing. Why are you? Stop. Oh, that's really annoying. When we get to product information, we can see the best sellers rank. Right now it's 131,000 in office products. The one thing that this doesn't show you on Amazon is out of how many products that is. Also, I'm interested, what's this one star rating? One star, zero reviews. I really like it, haven't any problems with it. That's odd, but because it's newer, it probably hasn't sold that much. And what we can actually do is take that ASIN and I'll look it up in something that I have called Scoutify 2. That'll show me a little bit more information. Manufacturer is the only one on the listing. We're not really worried about that. All we're looking at right here is this sales rank. You see it's 131,000 out of 6.2 million which puts it in the top 2% of products. And that's honestly pretty good. And a lot of times I'll end up buying those, but we'll talk about that in a second as I get to my rules for each specific category or in general. But let's look up their other scanner, which has been on the market for a lot longer and is much more popular. And since it's much more popular, we can already see that it's ranked 12,000 in office products, which is 10 times higher, putting it well in the top 1%. So essentially with sales rank, the more something sells, the lower the rank is gonna be. Return on investment, if you're not familiar with the concept, is basically how much profit you will earn for every $1 you spent. So like I said at the beginning of this video, I know that if I spend a dollar, I'll earn 50 cents in profit, meaning that I'll be able to pay back my dollar and pocket 50 cents of that, which is what we saw in the profit numbers towards the beginning of the video. And this target changes with cash flow. So let's first talk about sales ranks and then I'll explain why your target for return on investment should change with your cash flow going from a little bit higher to a little bit. This is my personal general rule of thumb when I'm sourcing, trying to figure out how much research I need to do before I buy it. Remember over here where I said that this is ranked 12,000 out of 6 million, that out of 6 million number is actually more important than you would realize because if there's a category that has 28 million items like sports and outdoors which i really love a sales rank of 200,000 is a lot different than a category that only has 1 million items because instead of being the top two percent it's the top like 0.1 percent so with categories over 10 million items if the sales rank is under 200,000 I'm normally not worried about it and I'll buy that item. There are times when I'm creeping up closer to that 200,000 where I might do a little bit more research. And especially when I'm buying new items, I normally will at least look at the Keepa chart just to make sure about a brand specifically. But if I bought something from a brand before and the sales rank is under 200,000, I'll start buying a lot of it. As sales ranks get closer to like 50,000 and less, that's when I know I have an item that's gonna sell multiple times per day. And I'll try to pick up as much of it as I can personally. If the rank is between 200,000 and 500,000, 
I'm going to still look at it and think that it can be really good, but I'm going to do a lot more research. That's why we have that orange thing there. I don't have a yellow expo marker. So if it's between 200 and 500,000, I think it could probably be a good buy, but I want to do some more research and really look at the Keepa chart. Currently, I use Scout IQ. You can't just get a Keepa subscription, but it's $10 cheaper per month for Scout IQ. And since I don't do online arbitrage right now, all I use this for is the sales chart. But when I do start to do online arbitrage, I am going to actually buy Keepa and get rid of this. But as we can see, every time that that dips down in that green, that's a sale that has been made. Real quick, I'm going to pull up an item from the replenishable video that I did. Which rank is right around 400,000, I think. The rank is 400,000. It's in the sports and outdoor category, so it's out of 28 million. And if we click into this Keepa chart right here, even though that rank is so high, it still has some sales. And so if the rank is between 200 and 500,000, I'm going to look at some additional things. If the rank is over 500, maybe to like 900,000 ish, I'll stop looking at it. If it's a million or above, I won't even really touch it. Sometimes if I know the brand, I'll still look into it. But for a general rule of thumb, under 200,000, it's going to be a good buy. Up to 500,000, I'll keep doing more research. If it's above that and I've not heard of the brand before, I'm not even going to look any further. The one exception for this might be books, but I don't do any books because I don't like it. But you can find books that have upwards of a million rank because there's like 160 million books in that category. Moving on to categories that are between 2 and 10 million products. If the rank is under 150,000, normally I think that's pretty good. Obviously, you're still going to need to look at Keepa to make sure you know how much you need to buy or like at a sales estimator online. And ranks under 100,000 in these categories still I'll normally just buy a bunch of because I know that they'll sell pretty well. But if it's under 150,000, normally I pull the trigger between 150 and about 350,000 in these type of categories is where I'll look for products that might be profitable, but I'll have to do some more research. And if it's over 350,000 or 500,000, something like that, I'm really not going to worry about it at that point. Most of this is on new products though, because if you have found a product and the rank maybe has gone up, but you still sold it, or you know the brand has been profitable for you in the past, you can still definitely look at those products. There are two more different types of products that we need to look at. The one is categories under 2 million items, where if the rank is under 100,000, normally I think it's going to be pretty good. If it's between 100,000 and 300,000 even all the way up there I'll still tend to look at it and the thought process behind that and the reason that I found products that are let's say in the grocery category that have up to $200,000 rank that I've still sold is because even though there isn't the same ceiling in terms of the number of categories there still might be the same number of categories that people would need in their life because you would think that people would need more grocery items than they would sports and outdoor items but there's 27 times more sports and outdoor items than there are grocery on Amazon so I don't really understand that so that's why I'll look up to 300,000 and if it's over 300k normal Normally, I just won't really look at it. And for the last type of category, we kind of have to throw all of this out the window because it's categories that are out of 1 million exactly. If you ever see this, it means that it's a subcategory of a larger category. Let me show you what I mean. These headphones over here were actually a return from Amazon a bunch of months ago. And I'm just going to look them up real quick on Scottify too. Skull Candy. And if we look at most of the categories that it pulls up when I look up Skull Candy, some of these are out of 468,000. And that would be an actual rank to look at. But most of these down here are out of 1 million, 1 million, 1 million, 1 million, 1 million, an earbud, an on-ear, an over-ear. There's not exactly a million of each of these items in each of these categories. But since it's a subcategory, you won't even get a good keep a chart when you look at those. And so anything normally for these under 1,000, I'll know is good. Sometimes though, it might not be because it's still a subcategory. And if it's between like 1,000 and 15,000, I'll try to do more research, but really the only way I know to do more research on these, and it still is a pretty good way to do it, is actually click into it and look at the Amazon listing because there we'll be able to see if it has any reviews. And this has 11,000 reviews, and you know how often people review products, and so for something to have 11,000 reviews on it, it probably has had to be sold like hundreds of thousands of times. And that's the main way that I'll look to see if something has sold, if it has one of these out of 1 million exactly categories. Problem though is that you can't just buy stuff that'll sell quickly because if you buy stuff that'll sell quickly but will lose you money, you're gonna go out of business really fast. So now we need to talk about return on investment and how much you need to look for there. And starting out, I generally recommend you to look for items that are at least 100% return on investment. I know you saw me getting about 60%, and that's even with most of the items that I saw still trying to be around that 100% ROI because of what happens after you ship it in. Prices may go down. You might have actually just made a bad buy and something won't ever sell, like happened to me in my first shipment of books. But it also gives you a lot of room to make mistakes if you're starting out or even if you don't have a lot of money. And we'll get to that more when we get to the cash flow based rules that I have. But starting out, 100% ROI is what I would look for. And that's still what I look for when I'm trying to source new items. But as you started to make some of those mistakes and you get a little bit more confident in your sourcing, I've dropped down what I look for to right around 50%, just as a minimum, because I know that I want to make some return on investment instead of zero return on investment. And that really brings us to the cash flow based system for understanding return on investment versus the cash that you 
have, and let's get a top-down shot so I can explain that real fast with the graph. All right, sorry for the skewed angle. Honestly, in this fan, I'm a little bit tired, and I'm not figured out how to get a perfectly top-down, because I'm literally hanging you guys out of a cabinet right now. But as we can see on this y-axis, we have 100% down to 50% of a respected return on investment, and that can actually go lower, but I just have those two milestones, because that's what we've talked about already. And then we were going to talk about cash available, but it's actually more spending power, because when we're talking about cash flow, that can be in the form of actual cash that you have in a bank account, or in the form of credit cards, which is the way that I mostly will spend money. But this spending power is not only how much you have access to, because technically I have access to a lot of capital, which is why I've been kind of teetering lower to this, but it's also your budget and how much you want to spend based on how much you want to grow the business. But if we're looking at minimum spending power, we'd want to spend as much as possible at that 100% return on investment. Ideally, it would look like this, but there's actually a third factor in play. I just grabbed the total wrong marker for that. So ideally, it would look like 100% all the time at, or above it, as, as high as it could possibly go is what we want. But if we're being realistic, you're not even going to be able to find as much 100% ROI stuff to infinity with your spending power. The other thing that's going to be a factor is the inventory that you have available to you. And there's been some months that I've been able to spend $5,000 at 100% ROI and I could probably find even more. But if we're kind of being realistic, that number will kind of go like this and then it'll probably find a good middle ground at about 35% where you can probably find that number in perpetuity as wholesalers and online arbitrage people have explained. And you might even be able to keep it a little bit higher. But as your spending power increases, being comfortable having a lower return investment is important because if you look at the inventory that you have available to you in your sourcing area, we're talking specifically about retail arbitrage here. In my experience, this could be something that's relatively possible for you if you live in an area that has a lot of stores and you're able to sell a lot of bigger brands. So at 100% ROI, your sourcing area has about $5,000 of inventory available for you to find. We're making up hypothetical numbers, but this is how I think you should think about it. If you have $5,000 available at 100% ROI and you only have $3,000 to spend, Ideally, you want to find 3000 of that $5,000 of 100% ROI inventory because you're going to make the most profit. That's why my rules are so high when you're starting out because there is some of that inventory for you to find and it has a lot of margin for you to make mistakes. But if you just go out and settle for finding 50% ROI things, there is more of that inventory, so you'll be able to find it potentially faster, but you're gonna make half the money. And if this is all the money you have to spend for the month, you wanna maximize how much you can make off of it. And so ideally for $4,000 and $5,000, you would also just get 100% ROI items. It'd be a lot harder when you're at the $5,000 because you'll have to tap out all of your market. And so that's where you wanna maybe be a little bit more comfortable finding $3,000 of the 100% ROI inventory, 1,000 of the 80% and 1,000 of the 70%. But as you get closer to these bigger numbers of really growing your business and spending $15,000, you'll be able to find all that 100% inventory and then 6,000 of the 80% inventory and then only about 4,000 of the 70% inventory. And so overall, even though you're making less return on investments, you're making as much as you possibly can. And once you get closer to this $100,000 number, you're gonna tap out all of the inventory that you can find at these different return on investments. That might mean that you wanna look somewhere else like online arbitrage, but all the way down to 35%, you might tap out your market. And so maybe you'll then have to look at 25% inventory. At that point, it's a question of, do you wanna only make 25% because it's more than 0% or would you prefer to do something else with that and reinvest it into a different business or maybe look online to try to find 35 and 50% ROI inventory. With this too though, it's not only the spending power that you have because every month right now I have over $10,000 of spending power, even more than that because Amazon also is offering me a $12,500 loan. So I could spend $25,000 right now if I wanted to, but because of where I want to be in my business, I know I only need $4,000 coming back to me every month, which is about $7,500 in sales for me. And so I'm only trying to spend three or four grand every single month to maintain that status quo, knowing that I can definitely grow that if I want to. And I'm probably going to do that in 2022, but I have a goals video coming out for you in the next week or so. One other question that I could see coming is what about minimum dollar return investments? And personally, I don't have those very much. I've sold a lot of inventory that I purchased for a dollar that's made me back 80 cents. And even though I probably should be spending my time on bigger ticket items, those things have been profitable for me every month of the year. And I've still been able to sell them, but that's something I might want to be growing out of as I'm trying to spend my inventory money faster. Cause that's another part of the equation that we really haven't talked about in this video, which is speed of sourcing so you can get onto other things in your life or other investments. But if you are just starting out, I would recommend trying to find items that have about a two or three dollar cushion potentially. And so here's my minimums for you. If you're a beginner, like bare bones minimums for an overall sales rank. When you're looking at items, I would say 150,000 is the rank that normally you'll be good at, but please do more research with some of the other tools that we talked about in other videos or ask questions down below. And I can make videos on what you guys are interested in as well and have questions about, and I do answer all the questions in the comments in terms of return on investment. I have two things to say, probably saw it coming, but hundred percent ROI is what I would recommend, especially if you're just a beginner beginner, because that'll force you to scan through a lot more products and learn more about the products that you're maybe missing out on at the 50%. And personally, I 
passed over a ton of products at 40 and 50% as I was growing this business because if you saw my credit card video, you'll know that I was building 100% of this off of debt and I didn't want to go into a super deep amount of debt. I wanted to keep it manageable, which is why I had a budget. And so finding 100% ROI items or that target helped me to stay really high. And when my prices did drop, I still made money because I had sourced the item at 100% and it maybe dropped a couple dollars and got down to 50%. But as a beginner as well, I would say you can get a 50% ROI item if there's a three to five dollar cushion on it. That's just what I recommend. These are all my recommendations. Do whatever you want in your business. But that's kind of what I did when I was beginning as well is if I would find an item that was $10 and it would make me back $15 so I can pay off the $10 and keep $5 in my pocket, I would buy that as well because that's a quick $5. And so if the price dropped by $5, I would just break even and that would be no problem because I'm a new seller and I'm not maybe the best at sourcing inventory yet. So 50% at a three to five dollar cushion. But if you're finding a lot of 100% ROI inventory, maybe don't pick that up because if you're on a tight budget, you're not gonna be able to spend more money at 100%, which is another reason I passed over a lot of those 50% items because I was finding so much at higher return investments that I didn't wanna waste money making less money than I could have even if I was still making some money. If you wanna learn the best categories to get started on Amazon, I would watch this video. But if you're a little bit more experienced of an Amazon seller, you should watch this video, which talks a lot about getting rid of inventory that's dropped in price instead of hoping for it to sell at a higher price and how you can actually make more money on it. See you tomorrow.